Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Orfe, and today I'm going to show you how I color graded this video. I'm going to show you my simple color grading method. This is very simple for anyone who wants to start into color grading videos. If you want to learn, please stick around and make sure to subscribe to this channel. All right, so let's jump right into it. So this is my red footage. It was shot in log and on the first node, what I usually do, I start with the last node. So I started with this, and as you can see, um, I changed the color space to a red white gamut. So this is the red uh, color space that's uh, that is provided by the red Komodo, and the input gamma I put the red log. 3G10. And for here, the output color space, usually I put it in Rec 709, but I just use the output color space um, from, from the timeline because it's the same Rec 709. So I'm going to show you the first node that I do is this one. So once you do it, this is the image that I got. Now, the goal is to get to the quality like this quality or this quality, right? So I'm going to go back to the first node, uh, to the first clip. Now, let's. this is a conversion that, that, that I did. As, as you can see. So the how you can do it is by choosing the color space transform. It's something that you can get into your effects panel. Um, you just go, for example, I'm just going to show you if I do this uh, into your library, into the effects, you just need to search for color, uh, color space transform. And what you do, you drag it onto the node and then you're going to have everything here as this one. All right. So I'm just going to get rid of this because you don't need it. And now once I'm done with the last node, what I do, I go back to the first node. The first thing that I do is I always change my contrast. So I'm going to click so you can see the before. This is the before and this is the after. But also with the red Komodo, what you have to know is that when you go down here, like here when you click, you can actually just change the ISO. Uh, you're going to have to, you know, in the decode using, in the decode using, uh, I instead of putting project, I put to clip. And once you do that, you're going to be able to see, you know, the ISO and change the temperature. So I change the temperature. I put it to 5,600 uh, uh, 56, Kelvin just because we were shooting in broad daylight. Now for this, um, now I'm going to go back to this panel, the prime, the, the primaries on the color wheel. Now, when you do the, the contrast, when I pull the contrast, so I'm just going to reset everything. And let's say one, 175, I'm going to reset this so you can see. So I just drag and kind of go and see up to where I need it to be. You know, first thing you got to understand is that color grading, you know, we're not, I'm not shooting for, for Nike or for a brand. This is just for myself. All right. So I decide what I want to do. And that's the beauty of just doing things for yourself. And if it works, well, it works. Some people might say, okay, this is not the way uh, to do it, but this is the way I do. And it works for me because at the end of the day, that's how I build my portfolio. And if I have to, if I need to find different methods, well, I'm going to find different methods, but so far, this is something that works for me. All right. So, um, I go to one 75 now it's 176 so i'm just going to put it like this so as you can see the before and after before now this is before and after and what it does it kind of adds more 
dimension to the photos. The back is not flat anymore. Uh, you you kind of see the difference. Even her, the model, she's not flat anymore. All right. Now, the next thing that I do, um, I choose Dehancer. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. It's not sponsored by Dehancer. But I do have the 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 plugin and I do have a code. You can use the code Okido if you want to get 10%. So this is something that I use. I just drop the answer in here to get this kind of look. Now, as you can see from this to this, it's a little bit different. This image is a little bit magenta, but what I do, it makes my image a little bit flat but it still gives it a little vibe or her little, you know, it, it gives it something. Now, what I choose for the film, what I did for this one, I used uh, Astrum Color negative uh, 125. And um, this is the before, this is the after. Now, it's still fade. It's not, you know, you can... You know, you can play with it, but what I usually do, there's a film grain. I remove the film grain because I prefer adding it differently. I'm going to show you at the end how I add it. So I remove the grain here. I uh, disable it. And then this is the second step. Now, the other step will be uh, color slice. Uh, I don't know which version uh, you use for uh, for DaVinci Resolve, but I'm using the the latest version. But I think by DaVinci Resolve 19, uh, it already came with the color, sli uh, color slice. I'm going to show you which one it is. So what I do, this, as you can see, before and after. So what I did, I went to the skin the skin tone as you're gonna see the skin tone is a little bit different um i made it pop a little bit more all right as you can see before and after the skin is changing so what i do you're gonna see still on the still on top here you're gonna click on after the curve you're gonna see there's this button After the curve, you're going to see this. It's called the color sl uh, slice. And you can target the skin. So that's what I did. Uh, I targeted the skin and then I added more saturation. So as you can see, if I add, if I do this and this, you kind of see the difference. So what it did. Okay. So what, what I did, I just targeted the, the skin tone and it went to, for everything that was a little bit because with as human beings or uh, whatever the shade or whatever, we all, we all have uh, yellow or red undertones. So it went to the skin, targeted the skin and I added more saturation and a little bit, as you can see here, more and less saturation, okay? So I made sure I had um, a little bit more saturation to the to the um, to our, to the whole body. So before and after. So now I have my dehancer, my color slice, and now I still felt like the 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 skin and the whole image needed more saturation, and I went for the saturation. But it was very subtle. The way I add saturation is just by clicking. And uh, the primary on the primary wheel, I go underneath here. You're going to see saturation. I added um, to 52.80. So if I double click, you're going to see. Let me go back. It's very, very subtle. Bef before and after so he added a little bit of pop and this is my color transform so this is the end of you know my grading now there is a one other step that i do so before doing that i'm going to show you how i make sure that 
the the whole image has a little bit more density and how you know um i make the color pop and this is something that i usually do at the end of all my videos on my color tab if you go on top here you have two uh two different uh whatever points here so you go from clips this is the the clip and you can go to the timeline so what you're doing here you can still add nodes to the whole timeline so it affects the whole video so i do this when i'm done with my video i'm happy with the color grading so now i just want to add more you know like the right i want to add the right tone if i want to add effects to the whole video if i want to add grains and stuff like that this is what i do so the first thing that i do you can add nodes the same way that we add nodes uh what i do i add curve so as you can see my curve it kind of instead of using haze i add curve and what it does it actually makes the whole image a little bit just a little bit darker because what i do i push my blacks you know i push my blacks a little bit on the on the right side so okay so I, i'm gonna move my blacks on the right side and we really go from this to this the other thing that i do i go to detail and detail it's right on the hdr and uh oh no what am i saying i go it's on the first wheel here and i go and i drag the details so what it does it's very subtle if you go back it goes from zero to uh, uh this is like for example the whole effect it goes to zero to a hundred that's not what i want to do so what i do usually um i just go if you go left you know how we soften the skin that's not what I want to do. If I go right, it makes the, 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 it, it's kind of clarity in a sense, but not really. But uh, what I do, I just make everything pop a little bit. So I go up to 10, uh, depending on the image, depending on the proximity that I'm shooting. And then at the end, remember when I said about noise, I add analog damage. And instead of going, instead of going to, um, you know, uh, uh, instead of just going to, for example, old VHS or whatever, I go to a clean slate and then I go to the broadcast signal and then this is what I do. I put the noise scale to, uh, to the maximum, to maximum, and then you're going to see on the image what it does so you kind of see the um you kind of see the type of noise that it adds to the image right you can i can do i can do it like this or this is the noise scale it's the type of noise that you have all right so this is as you can see like those are big noise like this is really really big <laughs> that's not what i do and um i make sure to go to make the the noise um very small instead of having it like uh you know this big i just bring it like this completely to the right and i start adding a little bit of that signal to the image all right thank you so much for watching if you have any questions please let me know in the comments you already know what time it is it's your boy orphan and me baby i'm out cheers